something that we must do for the Lord. And any chance you get, choose to hear the word of God. I wish folks would be excited. Amen. But I can't make them, and neither can he. And he ain't not going to, he just going to give it to you now. It's up to you. Now, all this journey we've been on has been dealing with accountability, credibility, and last week, God encouraged us to grow in the Lord. But now, in order to grow in the Lord, we need to cover the day, and this is our subject, growing grace. What we need to do to accomplish this, meaning, number one, you can do nothing without him. Anybody read the Bible? Yeah, yes, yeah. And the one thing we must do, you must understand what the word grace means. Yes. It means love. Yes. Not this fickle love. Not no Philadelphia love, that, that friendship love, but this is agape. Yeah. The highest form of love is that we should have one towards another. Yes, and the only reason we won't have this type of love is we're listening to other nonsense. Okay. All right, we're going to start at 2 Peter 3 and 18. He says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it didn't say no man, woman. It says, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And that's that. Amen. Now, in order for me to accomplish what God has asked us to do, basically, is to grow in love. It is amazing that I didn't speak. I love it when they're on the same tune. When I had John 13 because the first step beyond you accepting Christ and being accountable to it, he tells you to love one another. If you heard it, if you had your ears on it, John 13, it's going to be 34 and 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Bye. This shall all mean. It will be no doubt. Know that you are my disciple. You are my learner. You're still learning. If you have love one to another. Now you got that word is used so frivolously in our culture that you got to be yes, it is. careful. Yes, it is. First Thessalonians. Four, verse 9, but as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught, wait a minute, wait a minute, who's, who's going to teach you? Taught of God, no excuse. He said, you taught of God, what are you supposed to do? To love one another. When I bring the word, or the preacher bring the word, when you get home, God is the one that's going to get into Amen. your heart Amen. and Amen. cause you to love the unlovable. Amen. Because as he has forgiven you, yes, Lord. so much you forgive others. Amen. But it's even more, you, you, you begin to bless him because we're trying to accomplish this thing called grace and, and this thing called accountability and this thing called credibility. When you walk in the light, when you're the one that's not playing church, but you're living out the church in your own life. Oh, Psalm 103. That's why you ought to be loving God and loving yourself and your neighbor. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, Lord. And all that is what? Within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. 
What has he told us? Forget not what? You got to start remembering where you were and where he was. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Some of us are in a little bad state, bad for a while. If you really be honest with yourself, you know what I'm saying? You got to be honest now that God brought you from some place way worse than where you are now. And he said, he, whatever good work he started in you over that day, he said, I'm going to finish. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You don't hear what the Lord say. Who what? Who forgiveth all thine iniquity? Yes. Who healeth all thy diseases? Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Yes. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Now, I didn't write that. It's the truth. Any of us, when I look back over my life, I know it had to be God. I don't know about you, but I just have a heavy foot. I don't know how I still to this day. I meant to, I was going to Middletown. I had it flat over 120 and car stopped right in front of me. To this day, I don't know how I got around. A physics say you ain't nobody supposed to get around no car going 120 miles now and you just get around. I don't want to tell you, but, so you know, whatever it is, you might think it was a hard time, but God still brought you through it. And you can't deny that. Some of us been ill and know he touched us. Oh, yeah, who crowned thee. Now listen now. Who crowned thee. He's already crowned you with the ability. Listen, listen, listen. He said he crowned you with what? Yeah, I get excited with it. With loving kindness and tender mercy. In other words, he has already enveloped you with who he is. And then you're supposed to reflect who he is. You're supposed to love. Yeah, I know the folks that y'all try to get on my life. They got nothing to do with your nerves. You can't see him no way. You just listen to what some folks have told you. And that's our problem. We listen to the wrong folks. And then we build up certain things. Uh, who satisfied my mouth? Oh, no. Some of y'all going to eat good today. We're good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Some of you don't realize how much God has brought you from. I maybe some of them prove myself. I need to look in the mirror too, boy. Lord, I was kind of hard nosed that, you know. But he changed my countenance. I can't talk about myself. Well, I don't even understand. Look here, don't run from me. But I'm six foot eight, three hundred pounds. But they don't run from me. Yet some people are here don't see anybody. Or some folk come in your prayer, what you do? You grab your pocketbook and everything. Who's doing that? God is. And because he's done that, you should be about your father's business. Oh, Lord have mercy. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment. Uh, for all that are oppressed. When you're accountable to him, when you are, are, are beginning to do everything in a credible manner, you got God on your side. You don't have to let him see you sweat. Lord, have mercy. He made known his way unto most. His acts unto the children of Israel. Now see, the world will tell you, man, you don't have no fun. The Lord going to beat you up. That's not what the book says. What it say? The Lord is what? Merciful. Wait a minute. And gracious. And another, and what else? And slow to anger. And plenteous in mercy. Once you understand that, then you start, to, A, in, in God's biblical mathematics is new beginning. Then you start looking at life in a new way. You're not going to let this world contaminate you. Now let's go to Jeremiah 23. We're going to start at 21. And then I'm going to take you to 